Hello, this is old Mr. Kent, and <clears throat> I'm 82 years old and riding my tricycle around and telling my life story, <laughs> ride by ride. And if you're interested in uh, starting at the beginning, uh, at the end of this video, there's uh, you'll see a link that says life story, and you can go there and it'll take you through. There's probably quite a few videos now. Because uh, I'm up in my late 40s. <laughs> anyway, so let's get started. If you've been following my channel, you know that I'm a chief engineer at a Christian radio station in Pasco, Washington. And um, the uh, uh, the pastor, uh, the, the, the station was located at a church. And the pastor got me interested in flying. And, and he was a pilot. And so... Uh, <laughs> uh, he had a, a, a Beach Bonanza V-tail and big, heavy-duty, high, high-powered airplane. And then I went to California uh, one, let's see, 1977, I think it was, 1967, and um, uh, bought me a, a Cessna 170, which was about, it was 1950, <laughs> that's when it was made. Anyway, I came back. It's a tail dragger, and if you don't know what a tail dragger is, the the steering wheel is a little thing in the back of the uh, back of the of the plane, and uh, so uh, and it's much more sporty than a plane with a with a nose wheel, and so uh, he saw that, and when I came back, and he had had one years before, uh, before he got to be a preacher. Anyway. So he saw that, so then he wanted a tail dragger, and I, <laughs> I'll, I won't take your time, but anyway, the, the first thing he did was got a fly baby, and uh, that didn't work out too well. So then he decided he would sell it, and he bought a Stinson, and the Stinson was pretty much uh, outdated. The engine wasn't normal and all kinds of things, so he sold that. And then finally, he got a Satabria. And now, Satabria is a, not only is it a sport bike, but it's also an aerobatic bike. Uh, excuse me. Uh, it, it, Satabria supposedly is aerobatic spelled backwards. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so he got that. So, um, anyway, I got to fly it one time, as a matter of fact. And uh, well, actually, I got to fly it more than one time. But this one time I took my son up, who was just, you know, he was like nine, ten years old, something like that. And uh, uh, we were coming into the Pasco airport. And uh, the thing is, when you come in to an airport, there's a pattern that you follow. You, you get so the pilot can look out his window and see the, the airstrip. And it's called you go down left, uh, left downwind you're going the opposite direction as you're going to land and then you get down beyond the end of the runway and you make a left so you can turn around and come back and that's called left base and you go until you get lined up with the runway and then you turn and you're on final okay so I was coming in and uh, the uh, the tower cleared me for landing as soon as I got on left down base or left downwind and so I'm coming along, and as I get down to the end, he's talking to a, a U.S. Air commercial jet that's also coming in, and uh, uh, he clears him for landing or so. I don't remember now. I wasn't paying a lot of attention because what they weren't talking to me, and so he clears him, and so he's coming along. Of course, he's going much faster than the little Satabria, and I'm coming down. I'm about ready to turn base, and here comes this big huge uh, commercial jet and he's coming right towards me and I remember I can see the the fins on the on the the uh, jet engine I can see them spinning because he's coming down he's descending and slowing down and he's coming right at me and so instead of deciding to go ahead and land I decided give it full power <laughs> And get out of there. And so I went up. Well, of course, by that time, he went under me. And then so I told my son, I says, hang on. So we banked and we flew down. As he flew underneath of us, we flew down over the top of him. 
I wanted the tower to see what an idiot they were. <laughs> and so uh, anyway, uh, then I did what's called a go around. I came around again and landed. I don't know who was in the tower that day, but uh, they were they weren't on the ball. So anyway, uh, he got the Satapia. Well, then the next thing you know, uh, remember, I've talked about uh, doing um, a ground loop when you land one of those. It's like uh, what happens is if you push a, a shopping cart at Walmart, push it backwards and then let it go, it'll do a, a flip around. Well, um, tail dragger airplane wants to do the same thing. So you have to be real careful to keep it from doing that and going straight. Well, he made that mistake. <laughs> uh, he was coming in on the Pasco Airport, and uh, uh, actually, he did a ground loop going way faster than I think he should have. Now that Chitabri has got a lot of uh, uh, spruce wood in it, and so when it came around, I don't have a picture of that, but I have a picture of what what happens when when you do a ground loop going too fast. Uh, and it, it busted the tip of the wing about in about two feet from the end of the wing. It busted that, and uh, and then of course it was hanging down when when he finally finished, uh, and, and just kind of dangling around. <laughs> and so uh, so then he said, uh, "Can you uh, fly it down naturally? Uh, fly it down to Hermiston where our mechanic was." And I've done that all, for all the other planes. I might as well do that one. So here I am flying from Pasco to, to Hermiston. And I wish I had a picture. We didn't have phones back there. Couldn't take a cell phone picture. Anyway, I look out and out there on the end of my right wing, uh, the last two feet of the wing is hanging down, waving in the wind. <laughs> but we made it okay. And uh, he got, the, got it fixed. Well, so... <laughs> So then uh, the next thing that happened, he had he was working on his uh, Bonanza V-tail at, uh, you know, over by the uh, hangar area. And uh, he had the uh, had the uh, cowling off and he was working on it. And um, then he got he got fixed the way he wanted it and he wanted to check it out. So he. Uh, Started it up and started uh, doing doing a run up right there. Well, he had left his toolbox sitting uh, like here's the prop, and he had left a, saw, a toolbox sitting about a foot in front of the prop on the ground. And so, and uh, a propeller starts sucking. You know, that's how it goes through the air with suction. And so it started sucking, and it pulled that that toolbox right into the right into the prop. Well, of course, that made a lot of noise when that happened. So he stopped and then um, uh, he looked at it and the end of it was actually curled up. But uh, they can they can fix props that have something like that wrong with them. And so uh, then <laughs> he took the prop off and asked me if I'd fly it down to Boise, Idaho, which is where they repair props. There was a uh, service down there that did that and so what I had to do now the prop is all aluminum and it's heavy and it's about seven feet long and uh, in order to get it into my my Cessna 170 I had to take the front seat out and I had to take the back seat out and then uh, figure out how to wiggle that prop in and get it on the floor and then put the front seat back in and put the back seat back in so I would have something to tie the prop to just in case I hit some turbulence. And so uh, uh, I did that. But the only thing is now there's a whole lot of weight sticking way back in. the. It's in the tail of the, of you know, it goes b way beyond the passenger uh, section back to, back to the back. And... Um, so I had to make sure that I had enough weight and balance. Well, my friend Tom, who had the guy that, if you've been watching my videos, the guy that purchased my um, Cessna 150 uh, when I got the 170, and then he found out it was too heavy to be able to train in that plane 
um, because his weight plus the instructor's weight was more than the the plane was rated to carry. So because he was heavy, although him and I had done a bunch of flights in that. So anyway, so because he was heavy, I figured, OK, if he goes with me in the front seat, that will overcome the weight that goes way back behind the back seat. <laughs> and so that's what we did. We tried that, and sure enough, we took off and went down to Boise, Idaho, and landed. And the guys down there were amazed that I had a, a prop in my uh, in my Cessna 170. Uh, and we did, like I said, we didn't have pictures back then, or we could have if we carried a camera, but we didn't do that back then. So anyway, so <clears throat> that... <clears throat> So that's a weight and balance thing, but it also reminds me of another story. Uh, we had this, I had this guy who volunteered at my radio station. I don't remember his name, but he was way, way, way overweight. I mean, just huge around. He had Crohn's disease, and uh, which is, you know, eventually he passed away. But uh, just a super nice guy, and he came in to volunteer to run the radio station. And so the only problem is, is he, he couldn't drive and he had to take a bus or find somebody to give him a ride. And it was a big. So I uh, welded together a bicycle for him. <laughs> and I got one picture of my son riding it. And I had to extend the length for his for his belly and then extend uh, control control rods back from the where the where the uh, steering wheel would normally be, I put control rods back, uh, oh, maybe a foot or so, maybe, anyway, so that he could still uh, steer it and everything. So uh, so I gave him that, and he was able to ride back and forth. But then I, I also wanted to take him flying because uh, uh, I knew he would enjoy that. But I couldn't uh, put him in the back seat without my friend Tom in the front seat and I didn't have a uh, seat belt long enough to go around him. So uh, up north in Omac, Washington, uh, oh, about 80 miles north, some, maybe longer than that, uh, there was a, an aircraft, what you would call junkyard. And you could go, you could go there and get parts that were uh, off of crashed airplanes and things like that. And so... Uh, I made a trip up there, and I got a seat belt extender. Uh, they ha just happen to have one that clips on, uh, just make makes it longer for you. So uh, anyway, I think I'm I think I'm lost. <laughs> so anyway, had this seat belt get, seat belt extender, and uh, so he uh, I I put it all together. And uh, he climbed in the back seat, and we put the uh, um, seat belt around him, and he fit just fine. And then I had my Tom, my friend Tom ride in the front, uh, front seat to do the weight and balance and keep it uh, okay again. And uh, we took off, and it was a beautiful day. It, there was uh, cumulus clouds that looked like towers. And so we got, uh, we had to get up 10,000 feet or higher. And we were going, and there was just a bunch here and here and here. And uh, just a whole bunch of, of, uh, of clouds that looked like uh, pillars. And we went through those and everything and uh, just had a lot of fun. And then uh, came back and, uh, and landed and uh, he, he was pleased. Later on, uh, he was riding his bicycle home from the <laughs> from the uh, radio station and did something wrong and crashed and uh, bent the bike all up because he was so heavy. And uh, then he didn't want to ride it anymore. So so that was the end of that story. <laughs> anyway, uh, so there's some examples of when you uh, fly an airplane. You have to have the weight uh, in somewhere in the center of the wing because the front of the plane and the back of the plane are actually balanced 
on that wing and uh, uh, if you get it where there's too much weight in the back or too much weight in the front uh, then the plane will not will not fly it'll stall or dive one or the other so so anyway uh, those are some stories uh, uh, not, nothing really exciting except flying that plane down to Hermiston with the broken wing so let me see I'm going to turn around here and go this direction so uh, anyway I want to thank you for watching my videos and God bless <laughs>